I'm in. <laughs> yes, I'm in, Mom, it worked again! <laughs> Eureka! It's your old pal Roman here, and I am putting together the service that you are watching right this very moment. In case we've never met, my name is Roman Percival Johnson the first, and I am the video editor of the Kids in the Move Weekend Services, meaning I have all the power. I'm putting together the videos. If I want to do a funny sound effect right here, I can do it. <laughs> I love this fancy Bluetooth controller. I got it on Electronic Bay. It's the best. I can edit in things like this. And I could even bring in a GIF. Why not? Like this. Rough for that guy. Hey, wait a second. That's an amazing segue. We're here in a series called Suit Up, a series all about the armor of God. And what is the armor of God, you ask? Well, that's a great question. We're gonna find out a little bit later in a segment called Memory Verse Challenge. Ooh, I'm looking forward to that. We're also gonna hang with some of our favorite Kids on the Move pals. And hear a story about a guy named Daniel from the Bible who was visited by an angel. Amazing, kind of terrifying also. And stick around to the end because we have a brand new Kids on the Move song featuring rapper Dre Murray called Suit Up! <laughs> Second, that's the name of our series. What a crazy coincidence. But before we get to all that, it is time to kick it to a brand new segment called Super Awesome Joke of the Week. It's a super awesome comedy joke of the week. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, everyone, it's time for the super awesome comedy joke of the week. So here's how this works I'm gonna read a super awesome comedy joke, and when I point to you, you laugh like this. <laughs> Nice, we're off to a great start already. So he, uh, actually, I'm um, sorry, I'm getting a phone call. Let's see who this is. Hello? Hey yo, Millard and Fillmore here. Hey there, Cameron. Hey Millard, hey Fillmore, uh, what do you guys want? We heard you were telling some jokes. Yeah, we wanted to call. Cause you think I'm funny? Funny looking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just so mean, I. Hey Fillmore. Did you know Cameron tried to enter the weird guy contest? Yeah, the judge said, sorry, no professionals. Oh, <laughs> oh I can't breathe. Okay, okay, that's, that's not even a well-written joke, all right? Well, let's hear yours then, Mr. Comedy Writer. Uh, gladly, I will tell you my joke. Uh, so since we're in a series called Suit Up, I figured I'd tell a joke about fighting. So... Uh, why don't skeletons fight each other? Be because they don't have the guts! Ah! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> well, at least they thought it was funny. Uh, if you have a joke that you think is funny and you want us to read it right here, have your parents post it on Facebook or Instagram and tag Kids on the Move with the hashtag Super Awesome Comedy Joke of the Week. Make sure you tell us how old you are and what your name is, and there's a possibility we might read it right here. Because surely your joke will be better than Cameron's. You laughed at the joke. Nah, just roll the video. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm Pastor Hannah. Our series today is called Suit Up, a series about the armor of God. And with it comes a new memory verse for you to memorize. Our verse is actually several verses found in the book of Ephesians. It's Ephesians 6, 11, and then Ephesians 6, 14 through 17. Let's read it together. Here we go. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Uh, excuse me. Oh, hey, Watson. <laughs> Don't you, hey, Watson, me? Are you kidding? I never kid. But what? You come out here and say we're going to memorize a memory verse, and then you have the audacity. Audacity to recite the longest verse in human history? Uh, I'm sorry, rabbit history? It's like a thousand words long! Exactly. You knew about this? I did, because this is the verse, or the verses, we'll be referencing all series long, and we want you to memorize them so badly that we're putting a challenge out there to you for maybe a prize. 
Mm, I'm listening. While learning and memorizing the Word of God is a prize in and of itself, this challenge is just a little cherry on top. Memorize these verses, then have an adult help you make video of you saying them in one take. No cuts. Upload to Instagram or Facebook and tag us with the hashtag KOTM Memory Verse Challenge. Do it by the date on the screen and you will receive an awesome prize. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. What is it? Well, not only will you be entered to win a chance at us showing your video during a Kids on the Move service for the world to see, but you'll receive a personalized video of congratulations from one of our Kids on the Move friends. It could be Mr. Adam, Andrew Dale, Majunga, Watson. I could win a video of myself telling myself what an awesome job I did? Uh, yes. Well, I'm gonna go practice right now. Ephesians 6, 11 and 14 through 17. Start learning and get your video in by the deadline. Now here in a few minutes, we'll be talking more about the armor of God. But before that, it's time for something we're calling the big answer. It's now time for something we call the big answer. It's the answer to the question, what did you learn at church today? We want you to be able to answer that question with lightning speed. And today, as we begin our new series, Suit Up, our big answer is, I suit up when I... That, that's my doorbell app, I'm sorry. I guess someone's at my house ringing my doorbell. Hang, hang on. Hello? Hey, Mr. Bushyhead, it's uh, Leon, your delivery guy. Yeah, uh, hey Leon, you're thinking of Adam Bush. I'm Eric Donaldson. Yeah, but you still got a bushy head if I ever saw one. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, just to remind you, I'm uh, I'm Leon from Poop. You know, uh, people overnighting other people's packages. Yeah, I know. You always tell me that, Leon. I, I hate to break it to you. I didn't order a package. Oh, no. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, it looks like this one is for a uh, Mr. Rabbi. I guess a rabbi. I guess a Jewish guy. Uh, oh, no, wait. Nope. It's a... Uh, Rabbit. Uh, Watson Rabbit. <gasps> it's here! Uh, what is? Oh, looks like you got an armoire there. Oh, those are nice. My, uh, Grandma Great had one of those, you know. God rest her soul. I, I think you mean your great-grandma had one. Nah, actually, my grandma's, uh, first name was Great, you know. On account of when my great-grandpa found out his wife was pregnant, he goes, Oh, Great! Oof. There's a, there's a lot to unpack there. Be right back. Okay, I, I gotta go. Bye. Did you just go get the... Rabbits are fast, Eric. Keep up. Okay, now I'm almost done. Ta-da! What is that? I'm suited up. What? It's the armor of God, see? It says, God. Where did you even get that? eBay. Bought it off a guy in the Philippines named God. I mean, technically, his name was spelled G-A-D, but I thought, eh, close enough. Off to battle! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Th this is not the kind of armor that we're talking about. Oh, right, because it's missing a piece. Stand by. Behold! The sword! Watson, this is not what we're saying today. Huh? No, no. We're actually saying I suit up when... Leon delivers it! No. I find it on eBay! No. I find it on eBoy? That's not a thing. Well, then what? When I pray up. Huh? I suit up when I pray up. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Said nobody ever. Okay. Off to battle! Sword, come with me! I'm okay. Okay, I'm going to check on Watson. In the meantime, I think this Bible story will help us all understand a little bit more about how to suit up. It's time for a Bible story. Today, our Bible story takes us all the way back to about 500 BC. Yeah, when there was nothing but like water and ice and woolly mammoths stomped around like the monsters they are. Ah, save me from the furry brown elephant, scrump. Um, no, no, that's not actually an accurate depiction of a mammoth, nor are we going back that far. 
Our story takes place just after the fall of the city of Jerusalem. What did the city like trip and fall? Ah, I'm falling. I'm a city, but it's still happening. In the book of Daniel, we read about how God's people, the Israelites, had previously been rescued out of captivity from Egypt. Hashtag Pharaoh. Hashtag plagues. Hashtag Red Sea. Hashtag I'm a chariot. I was just learning to drive. Daniel tells us about how the Israelites had all but forgotten how God had delivered them. They disobeyed his instruction. Disobeyed? They scorned his commandments. Scorned? Ignored the wisdom of the prophets. Ignored? Because of that, the king of Babylon. Baby land. We've discussed this. It's a land full of babies, which seems cute at first, but ultimately, ends in a watery mess. Babylon was the rival city led by King Nebuchadnezzar. Hold up. What's that name again? Nebuchadnezzar? Ooh, that's going to be hard to remember. Let's see. Rhymes with Ned Can You Taze Her or uh, Never Can Desert. Ooh, ooh, no, I got it. King Negative Buzzard. Nailed it. King Nebuchadnezzar. Negative Buzzard. And his armies defeated Jerusalem, took a bunch of their stuff, and even kidnapped their people. One of those people was, let me guess, super weird Bible name like Totem McScreezers or Philandrius Von Piano Teeth. No, it was Daniel. What? Nah, too normal. Judge, I call foul. Okay, fine. Later, they called him Belteshazzar. Ah, I arrest my case. For years, Daniel and his people were captives. There were good kings and bad kings and crazy situations like this time his friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to worship a statue and so they were thrown into a fiery furnace. We only worship God. Make the fire seven times hotter. It's too hot for even us. There's an extra guy in the fire. It might be Jesus, but we're not sure. Too early in the book to tell. Everyone's fine. Interesting recap. Thank you. But one thing was for sure. Daniel never stopped worshiping God. Ooh, he really is the goat. In fact, one day, the king. Never have I ever? Nope, different king. His name was Cyrus, and he had a vision that there was war coming. Out time. Get us a gang of combat carls strapped to the nines with like machine guns and bazookas and snake grenades. Snake grenades? Uh, yeah, they're like hand grenades, but instead of shrapnel, cobras jump out like in those snakes in a can thing. But instead of scaring you, they eat your face. Ah! Take that, bad guys. God's people out. While I would like to see that, it wasn't specifically going to be a time where Daniel and God's people were saved. Thankfully, Daniel had been building his own snake grenades. Praying. Mm, yeah, that was going to be my second guess. He repented for how disobedient God's people were and prayed for God's mercy for their city. He prayed for 20 days straight. Whoa, and then what happened? Well, nothing. Nothing? A guy prays for nearly three weeks straight and doesn't hear a thing? All right, that's it. Wrap it up. Sorry, Combat Carl, Woolly Mammoth, and King Nectarine Yogurt. This story's done. Well, it certainly seemed that way, until day 21. Daniel was standing on the bank of a river when he saw a man dressed in linen clothing. He had a belt of pure gold around his waist. His body was like a precious gem. His face flashed like lightning. His eyes flamed like torches. His arms and feet shone like polished bronze. Uh... Are you done? Uh... Okay, what? That sounds like a freaky guy. Kinda. In fact, when he spoke, his voice roared like a huge crowd talking, and Daniel's face hit the ground. Hey, no shame there, Daniel. But then the angel said, Wait, angel? Okay, uh, that would have been nice to know. He said, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding, your request was heard in heaven. What? Hold up. That was like 21 days ago. What was this angel doing, huh? Watching movies, catching some waves, hanging at the Angels Only Allowed Here Super Beach Club? Which, honestly, super jealous I can't be a member there. No, the angel said that for 21 days, the prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked his way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help him, and he left him there to fight. Now, he was here. So you're saying that angel was on his way with Daniel's answer when he had to stop and fight in a battle against the enemy, and so another angel warrior had to step in? That's what the Bible says. Whoa. As long as Daniel was praying, the angel was fighting to bring him his answer. And he did. 
he revealed the future to Daniel. Crazy. In fact, when the angel left, he said that he was going to have to fight again. The ultimate fight, angel versus evil prince, a spiritual battle in the highest of places, this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Man, that's gonna be a sellout ticketed event. Because of Daniel's prayer, not only did he hear what was to come and how God's people would eventually be delivered, but he learned about the spiritual battle happening all around us. And if you're living in Bible times, chances are you're going to have a weird name. That too. The end. You have always been. You will always be my strong refuge. A safe place for me You have always been You will always be My good, good God My confidence and peace Cause I know it is finished The end I'm written My hope is secure I've got a savior His name is Jesus He's overcome the world
What's up everybody, Adam Bush here. Hey, I am super stoked, I hope you are too. We are starting a brand new series called Suit Up, and I'm really excited, partly because, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm super in to superhero stuff, like Iron Man, Batman, Captain Marvel, Thor. I even like the kind of lame superheroes, you know, like Hawkeye, because I mean, come on, think about it. Like, he's an Avenger just because he can shoot arrows? I can shoot an arrow. I can shoot an arrow. I think my favorite part of any superhero film is, you guessed it, it's when they suit up, right? I mean, think about it. Think about Iron Man 2 when he's like yelling and he's just like, throw me the suitcase! And they finally throw it to him and so he's able to put his armor on. Or like in Avengers Endgame when they see Thanos and uh, Thor just like reaches out and uh, this lightning like just like puts a suit on him and that part is like super awesome. What I love about it is uh, they're one person one second, but whenever they put on the suit, completely changes everything. They're super different. Throughout this series, we're going to be talking about uh, kind of a similar thing with you, how God has given you a tool that is a suit that makes a difference in your life. It's called the armor of God. In fact, we have an armor right here today. This is the kind of suit that they would have worn in old timey battles. And they're pretty serious business, right? I mean, you got a helmet here, you got a breastplate, something around their feet and their shins. You got a sword, some kind of weapon. Daniel's story tells us that we are part of a battle. It's a spiritual battle, so we don't see it. But the enemy is the devil. The Bible calls him the opposer sometimes because he is opposing you, which means he is against you, and he is throwing weapons at you constantly. But they're not physical, like real weapons that you can feel, right? They come in the form of temptation, or fear, or worry, or sickness, things like that. So we gotta fight. One of the tools God gives us to protect us and to fight in this battle is, you guessed it, it's the armor of God. But obviously this armor is not physical, put it on yourself kind of armor. It's something else. If you know what it is, I want you to yell it out. If you said prayer, you were right. The armor of God is your prayer. When we pray and when we talk to God, we are putting on our armor of God. That's why our big answer today is, I suit up when I pray up. Say that after me, say, I suit up when I pray up. You suit up when you pray up to God. But you might be asking me, hey Adam, how do I do that? When I was a kid, anytime somebody would talk about prayer, praying to God, I regularly thought, oh man, this is kind of gonna be like pretty hard to do, right? How are you supposed to talk to God? You're probably supposed to like say all the right words and only do it when like everything's like super quiet or maybe you only do it at church or you can only do it whenever like you're older or something like that. But I am here to tell you right now in this moment that that is not the only way you can talk to God. You can talk to God the same way that you could talk to me. God invites us to talk to him just like we would talk to a person here on earth. When you read the Bible, especially when you read books like Psalm, you see people like David, King David, who would cry out to God about his pain or his frustration or his worry. And God thought it was important enough that he let it be in the Bible. So if that's true for David, then that's true for us. We can be completely honest and real with God. So. With that, I'm gonna give you like three really helpful things to remember whenever you're talking to God. And if you follow these, then you're gonna be able to put on the armor of God. All right, I'm gonna tell them to you and then I'm gonna kind of explain them to you a little bit. Here we go. Number one, when you're praying, when you're talking to God, tell him how you feel. Tell God how you feel. I would imagine that a lot of us right now are feeling pretty lonely. We've been quarantined for a long time because of the virus. Uh, school's kind of coming to an end. So even classmates we might have seen online or our teacher, we're not seeing as much anymore. Uh, maybe you had a birthday party and you weren't really able to celebrate it the way you wanted because all your friends weren't able to come. Telling God that that makes you sad, it's okay. You can do that. He wants you to do that. And you can say it just like this. God, I'm pretty sad right now. This is pretty lonely doesn't feel real good on the inside when I think about the fact that I can't go outside and play with all my other friends. That's how you tell God how you feel. Number two, tell him what he did. When I read the Bible, I see the story of David and I see where God gave him a friend in Jonathan. When I read the Gospels, I see Jesus 
being surrounded by people that he loved being around. Jesus had friends. And so when you go to God and when you're talking to him, you can say, hey, I don't know how this would work out, but I am lonely. And God, I see where you gave people in the Bible friends. I would like the same opportunity that I could either reconnect with my friends or there be unique ways where we could spend time together. And number three, tell him what he said. The Bible regularly reminds us to remind God of his word. Now, it's not like God forgot his word. It's regularly more for you, mostly so that we can be speaking the word of God out of our own mouth and reminding ourselves of what God said about us and to us. God doesn't promise that you won't have feelings like loneliness. He does promise though, that he will be there with you to help you bear that weight. When you ask God for peace, he will give you a peace that is so real it will be in the face of what is going on around you. It'll be the kind of peace that are like, man, I really shouldn't be at peace right now. I really should be feeling lonely because I haven't been spending time with my friends, but this peace that God has given me is bigger than that. When you do these three things, you are suiting up. You're putting on your armor and you're getting ready for battle. Over the next few weeks, we are going to be looking at each different part of the armor. It's so cool. And why God gave each part to you. So if you made that decision to join God's family or ask Jesus in your heart, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross and was raised from the dead. And I believe that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for saving me. Jesus name, amen. Guys, that's awesome. It's the most important decision that you'll ever make is to join God's family. You've got Jesus in your heart, you're saved, however you wanna say it. We are so thrilled for you. If you prayed that prayer, you are part of God's family, you're saved. We are so excited for you. You can't make any decision that's gonna be any bigger than that decision. Now, there's two things I want you to do. First thing, you need to tell someone that you're a part of God's family. Tell an adult that you trust, I made a decision to follow God. Second, we have a link right here on the screen. And if you'll click on it, we've got resources for you. Grab a parent, go to the website. We've got stuff for you so you can learn more about being in God's family. All right, well, we had so much fun with you here today. We're excited to see you next week. And we'll see you next time. Get it now, buddy? The armor of God is not about putting physical armor on. In fact, we're saying, I suit up when I pray up. Say that with me. I suit up. I suit up. When I pray up. When I pray up. Nice work. You're getting it. I am. This is not my armor. My armor is my prayer. Great. So now I guess I'll just use this armor to go fight a huge army. No. Too late. I've already been insulting and talking trash and telling people I'm gonna battle them. Not appropriate. Enemy, here I come. Ooh, 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 ouch, ooh, oh, oh, that's smart. Oh, that's gonna bruise. No, Watson, no. Do not get in that cannon. <laughs> Watson, you okay? Uh, suit up? <sighs> That was just a bad idea anyway, but it does remind me that folks, it is time for our brand new song. Get ready, here we go, the debut of the original Kids on the Move song, Suit Up.
comes my way, I'm gonna hold my ground. I'm gonna stand and fight. Suit up, it's going down. Yeah, cause I fight to win. I break through any change you try to put me in. Devil, I'm strong, got my armor on. Yeah, you're gonna run when you hear that it's time to suit up. But you didn't because you were watching the, the music video. So sorry, you, you missed it. Maybe next time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has been real fun. Hope you've had as much fun as we did. And remember, parents, parents, I'm talking to you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, parents? Kids, wave at your parents. Say, come on over here. I got some info for you. If you want to stay up to date on all things Kids in the Move, meaning you want links to great videos, maybe you want to connect with the kids pastor, you can do that by texting the word kids to 23101. That's just teepy toppy boop 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 kids 23101. And you are in the Kids on the Move VIP club! <laughs> oh, I gotta stop that button. Getting a lot of use out of that button, but maybe it's... Okay, one more. Oh, that was the wrong one. There we go. <laughs> be sure not to miss week two of our series, Suit Up. It is gonna be so much fun and it's happening next week right here at Kids in the Move. It's gonna be amazing. I cannot wait to see you there. Until next time, this is Roman signing off. Farewell. 